Yesterday, Luke Fox made this article on Sportsnet that I thought was really interesting and that I actually wanted to bring up here because it brings up a few interesting ideas that we can observe with the Toronto Maple Leafs and what could happen as the next season comes along and establishes itself as reality. The article here is called Nine Biggest Off-Season Questions Facing the Maple Leafs. Now, it's really long, this article. He goes over nine very detailed and very in-depth analyses on different subjects, and we're only going to be focusing on a few of these today, but the most important ideas that I wanted to talk about in this video are, first off, the blue line, and second off, who's out. Because these two ideas are separate in the article, but they are, indeed, linked. In some form or another, they are indeed linked, and that is why we're going to be bringing this up in this video today. I wanted to take a look at, first off, the Improve the Blue Line segment here on Luke Fox's article, and pretty much the idea that he's trying to point out, the point of this little piece right here, is talking about how the Leafs were one of the worst teams in the league when it came to goals against. They were bottom six in the league in goals allowed, and although the Leafs were one of the highest scoring teams, they were legitimately very, very poor when it came to shot suppression and goal suppression. As a result, defense is what Luke Fox is saying the Leafs need to address, and it's always the same narrative, a right-handed defenseman coming back who can be a reliable guy and suppress shots, a guy who can come onto this team and make other teams work for their shots a little bit harder, or completely cancel out those shots overall. That's something that the Leafs would have been very much in love with if they had this season, because when you take a look at the Leafs' decor, you have some good players on there. Yes, Morgan Riley is great. Yes, Jake Muzzin has his showings. Yes, Tyson Berry, you could say what you want about Berry, but he does do some good things offensively. But when it comes to cranking things down in their own zone, making Freddie Anderson's job a little bit easier, and overall just suppressing shots, the Leafs were one of the worst teams in the league. So Luke Fox points out the idea of landing a dependable right shot defenseman in free agency, and he says how that's a long shot. So if Kyle Dubas can't find a way to sign Alex Petrangelo, Chris Tanev, Travis Hamanick, Justin Schultz, or Radko Gudas, he'll be exploring trades for righties with term. Candidates such as Matt Dumba, Rasmus Ristolainen, Colin Miller, and Josh Manson fit that bill. And to me, that's something that, as somebody who does follow the Leafs and somebody who does cheer for the Leafs, in some capacity, I know I'm a primary Canucks fan, a secondary Habs fan, a tertiary Red Wings fan, so it's kind of weird to say that I also cheer for the Leafs too, but I want this team to succeed and I want this team to do well. Any one of these guys would be indeed very positive assets and acquisitions to the team. Getting a guy like a Chris Tanev, who in my mind is not going to go to free agency, that's what I think in my biased Vancouver Canucks-based mind, he can come over to this Leafs team and suppress shots, block shots, make things hard for other teams, and shut down potential offensive chances. That is what a Chris Tanev does. That is what an Alex Petrangelo does. What a Justin Schultz does. And sure, some of the guys that are on the other side of that bill, Matt Dumba, Colin Miller, Ristolainen, may not be the best in that category, they're better than the small sample sizes we have seen out of guys like, let's say, Timothy Liljegren, or a Cody Cece, or a Martin Marinson. And I know not all of those guys are right-handed, but you kind of get the idea I'm trying to paint when it comes to the Leafs' decor. They could use players who are just better on that back end. 
So with that established, the other idea that I wanted to talk about from this article is who exactly gets traded out. This is a very interesting idea that was brought up in the article, so I just want to read this to you here. As was the case in the 2019 offseason, the only way we can see Toronto continuing to cut checks for the Big Four, Matthews, Tavares, Marner, and Nylander, is by taking a bite out of the middle class. First off, that's like some complete parasite-like material right there. The rich depriving all these great things from the middle class and the poor, and living in their thrones of wealth, not bothered by the dangers that are going down below. It's like, very poetic right there. But, it's not personal, it's just math. How does that impact the future of Kasperi Kapanen, and or Andreas Janssen, and or Alex Kerfoot, none of whom have trade protection? And which one of those middle six caliber forwards can yield the best return? Now, it's always been those three. Kapanen, Janssen, and Kerfoot. These were the three that everybody was talking about at the trade deadline that Kyle Dubas was supposed to move or that he was thinking about moving, and they're the only ones that actually make the most sense in the context of the Leafs cap situation and who they have under contract right now. Any of these guys, if they can be traded for one of those right-handed defensemen that were mentioned earlier, they do it. Because... What the Leafs have is a plethora of scoring forwards. When you have a team that has Tavares, Matthews, Marner, and Nylander, you could kind of sacrifice giving up one of Kerfoot or one of Janssen or Kapanen. If it's especially for the benefit of your back end, you do it. Which is why people have been bringing this up for ages ages people have been talking about trading one of these three guys for a defenseman, but obviously when you're taking a look at it, you have to take a look at the other team, say if it's going to make sense for them. The likelihood of them saying yes or no is indeed a very important part of these trade discussions now, isn't it? But with this in mind, I just wanted to pose a question out to you. Obviously, this is just Luke Fox spitting. This is him saying this is what should happen, and these are the viable ways that this can be achieved. So if it's up to you, if you're a Leafs fan, if you're a fan of the Minnesota Wild, if you're a fan of the Buffalo Sabres, if you're a fan of any of the teams that own either the forwards that we mentioned, or the defenders that we mentioned, then I want to hear what you think down below. Would you be interested in a Janssen for Ristolainen trade if you're a Buffalo Sabres fan? How does that sound to you? Because I know there are a lot of other people who will bring up different perspectives from different teams and team point of views, so I want to hear it all down in the comments below. As for me, as a Canucks fan, obviously Tanev is on this list here, but this has been a very, very big topic for years now. Tanev to Toronto has literally been stirred within the pot of Maple Leafs trade rumors ever since, like, 2016, pretty much? It's been a long time since we started talking about Tanev to Toronto, and of course, with him becoming a UFA in a few months, or is it even gonna be in a few months? I have no idea. It is indeed an addition to this little discussion we're having over here. Personally, I believe the Vancouver Canucks are gonna go out there and they're going to re-sign Tanev. Now, it is a very difficult idea because they do have to sign Toffoli and Markstrom and Stetcher and Vertanen and Gaudet and all these other really good players, but Tanev to me is one of the higher ones on the priority list. But that's obviously just me as a Canucks fan giving my two cents here in this discussion. So if you're a Sabres fan, if you're a Wild fan, if you're a Philadelphia Flyers fan, if you're a fan of any of the teams of the D-Men that have been mentioned, comment down below what you think. Honestly, do I think that Dubas is going to go out there and get another right-handed D? I think so, but the caliber of that right-handed defenseman is going to be the deal-breaker here. Does he get another plug of a right-handed guy, or does he get somebody who can legitimately suppress shots and legitimately help this team out from being one of the worst goals against and shots against teams in the league? Time will tell, and we'll have our answer in about a year from now. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Social Life Trolls 99. And bye.